and um, Mr. Jordan. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director, why did you take their copy of the Constitution? I'm sorry, take the, copy of the, whose, the couple, whose the couple in uh, The couple in Alaska that turned out to be the wrong couple, you, you kicked in their door, you held them at gunpoint, handcuffed them, interrogated them for four hours, you took their phone, you took their laptop, and you took a copy of their pocket-sized Constitution. Why did you take the Constitution? Well, Congressman, as you know, I can't discuss a specific investigation. I'm not sure whether your characterization is accurate or not, but I, I can't provide a specific been information about the, a pending reported, investigation. It's been reported in the press. Our staff has actually talked to these individuals. That's what, the, I mean, it's, they, they tell us this is exactly what happened. I'm just curious, you know, I see what you'd maybe, you had the wrong couple, but if you take their phone, their laptop, I'm just curious why you take their Constitution. Again, I can't comment on a specific investigation and what the Have you personally talked to the Hoopers? Have I talked to whom? Have you talked to this couple in Alaska? Again, the, the, the couple who had their door kicked in, damage to their door, the FBI has now repaired their door, uh, held a gunpoint, handcuffed, and interrogated for four hours. Have you talked to him personally? Uh, no, I have not. If you find out it's really, I mean, I, I think it's obvious to, it, based on what we've discovered that this was the wrong couple, that these weren't people who did anything wrong. Uh, if you find out they are, will you call them? Uh, I'd have to look at the circumstances of what happened, but it's an ongoing investigation. That's all I can really say on it at this, at this time. If it turns out you, you've sent their phone back to them, the laptop back to them, if it turns out that they are the wrong couple, as again, as I, I think that is, is pretty obvious, um, what happens to the data on the phone that you have? Can you, I'm sorry, can you explain a little bit more what you're asking? You keep a record, like you, you return the phone to them, but the data on the phone, do you have like copies of their text messages, emails, anything on their phone? Did you keep all that? Um, I well, when we return people's information, my impression is that we don't keep that information, but it depends on the circumstances of the investigation. It's an innocent couple. You, you, your impression is you're not going to keep information? Well, again, I can't discuss a specific investigation. If, I, if you would like to get more information about how it works when we return, more generally, our policies and practices, when we return information, I'm happy to see if we can provide that information to you separately. Well, you would think if, it's, if, it's, if they're not if they're innocent, if they're not guilty, and you've got information on them, you would, you would get rid of that information. You wouldn't, the FBI wouldn't keep it. And I'm not trying to... But again, in light of what we've found out with about FISA, maybe not. I'm not I'm, I honestly, I'm really not trying to quibble with you here. The only reason I'm providing is what sounds like a confusing answer is because each case is different, depends on the circumstances as to how you got the information, what the circumstances were. We certainly have instances where we purge information that we have. I know that happens. We have other instances where we may be investigating something and the information is kept. But again, it depends on the circumstances as a whole network. Do you know, do you know how this couple this was stuff. identified? I mean, you, you look on your uh, Twitter site, the, the, the posted tweet is a, is a crowdsourcing. Can you help us find these individuals? You got pictures of individuals. This is relative to January 6th. Um, were, were, was this couple in Alaska found through the crowdsourcing, that, 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 that technique? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that sitting here right now. And again, I want to be careful not to discuss a specific investigation. I will say that more generally, in, related to January 6th, uh, part of the purpose of, of uh, putting out information for the public is for the public to identify people, right. know people to identify. You're doing, are you doing that as well for, for the rioters, the, the, the people in the Antifa in Portland? You're doing that as well them? Yes, okay, absolutely. Good. You, you, uh, is, it, is it a habit of the FBI to take constitutions from people that you're interrogating? I don't know if it's a habit to pursue any particular document. Just found, we, I just we, found that we just seize the evidence that's relevant to what's in the affidavit that we search warrant affidavit that we presented to the judge who signed off on it. Did you sign off on the uh, on the raid on Mayor Giuliani's apartment? Again, I'm not going to discuss any specific investigation. I don't normally sign off on specific operational activity as FBI director. Because I'm going to ask. I asked, did you sign off on this specific FBI activity where the president's personal lawyer's apartment in Manhattan was raided? And again, I'm not going to discuss any specific investigation. The, um, are you aware of any leaks by the FBI or the Department of Justice about an investigation of Postmaster General DeJoy? I'm aware of news coverage uh, about an investigation related to that individual, but I'm not aware of leaks from people inside anything? the FBI. 
You haven't been briefed on anything relative to the FBI or the Justice Department relating to that leak of an investigation of the postmaster. Gentlemen's time has expired. The witness may answer the question. I can't discuss a specific investigation. Uh, I am aware of the news coverage about the investigation you're referring to, and I'm just going to have to leave it at that here. Thank you, Director. Uh, the gentleman yields back. Director, it always seems that the leaks from our institutions and government agencies benefit Democrats. I mean, we just had the, as Mr. Bishop pointed out, we just have the fact that the IRS leaked the personal tax returns of U.S. citizens. It just happened to be at the time that Democrats are trying to raise taxes on the American people. Um, and then, of course, there's what happened, someone from the FBI or DOJ leaking information about the fact that Mr. DeJoy, at least it's been reported that Mr. DeJoy is under investigation, under investigation for, if, if you can believe what's written in the press, for alleged campaign finance violations that took place between 2004, I think, and 2015. So even if he did it, it seems to me the statute of limitations has, has run. Um, so I want to ask about that in particular. Is there an internal investigation at the Justice Department or more specifically at the FBI? I know you have an inspections division. Uh, this is the division, my understanding, that looked into Andy McCabe's issue when he leaked information that he shouldn't have leaked. Um, is there some kind of internal investigation going on? Well, uh, as you uh, by now have probably come to expect from me, Congressman, of course I can't confirm any specific investigations, but what I can tell no, this you... Is, I'm not talking about an investigation that the FBI is... I'm talking about an internal investigation to actions that, that someone in, in your division may have leaked information to the press regarding the Postmaster General. Likewise, I wouldn't confirm a specific investigation. We have our uh, inspection division has a unit dedicated to internal investigations, and we put some of our best people in it because of how important it is. We also have uh, that I stood up in the last administration uh, in our counterintelligence division a dedicated leak unit to pursue criminal investigations where that uh, is appropriate. In some cases, they work with each other, you know, because there's an administrative side and a criminal side. But really, that's all I can say. I can't really confirm specific investigations. No, I, I understand. You've given that answer to us. And, and look, I get that. You've given that answer to us a thousand times a day and a thousand times. And the other times you testified, I, I understand that. But when we're talking about the Postmaster General of the United States, we're talking about uh, the tax returns of the American, um, of American citizens, again, all conveniently timed, it seems to me. I mean, last summer, the Democrats, many Democrats called for the Postmaster General to step down. They had, the left had all kinds of protesters at his house last summer in the whole debate about, about mail-in voting. Um, and then we see this story sort of out of nowhere that, that supposedly uh, he's under investigation. I just was curious if you'd tell us if it's internal. Does the FBI uh, give critical race theory training to your agents and employees? Uh, not to my knowledge. We certainly provide different kinds of diversity training, just like almost any organization these days. But certainly I've never heard of any kind of critical race theory training. But does that, is that a yes or a no? Is there critical race theory training going on at the FBI, yes or no? Uh, and my answer is not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of. Okay. Uh, how about this, um, the issue of this, the Washington Post reported back in April that um, FBI had sent, quote, geofence search warrants to Google and got information about January 6 phone numbers uh, of, of, of folks here on Capitol Hill. And that include members uh, and staff and others who were authorized to be in the Capitol on that, on that date. Um, how did you distinguish, uh, it's our understanding according to the, to the news reports there's an exclusion list of, of folks who were, in, you know, supposed to be in the Capitol that day. How is that all, how is that all being handled? How did you determine who, who's on the exclusion list, who isn't? How did you get that information and what are you doing with that information now? Particularly the phone numbers and identifying, uh, uh, ident identifying phones of members of Congress and staff who are supposed to be on Capitol Hill. So I think you, you anticipated probably the most important part in, in your question, which is, again, and I want to be careful not to talk about any specific investigation, uh, but the geolocation data that we're talking about is, again, it's not, it doesn't identify a person, it identifies a device. And so one of the first things we needed to do, because on January 6th itself, our focus was on trying to secure you all and the facility, so we weren't arresting people here on site. So after the fact, we needed to figure out who was here. 
by looking at the list of device numbers. And then with that, we needed to be able to get from, and I think we got it from the Capitol Police, but I'm not sure about that, a list of who was, as you said, supposed to be here so that we could exclude those people and focus on the numbers of we know that who were not people, supposed to be here. No, I, and, I and then using those numbers, then start to pursue logical investigative leads of the people who were not supposed to be no, here. No, I appreciate that, uh, and, and thank you. But some people who were supposed to be here, we know were subsequently called. Um, by the FBI, and they were staff on Capitol Hill. Um, that's because you didn't know, you were finding out I mean, what, what, was going, what was going on there. The gentlelady's time has expired. The gentleman may, the uh, witness may answer the question. Well, again, I don't want to speak to any specific investigation, but our reasons for going to interview witnesses about things uh, are a lot more than geolocation data. So it may have been that we saw a video footage of somebody and we think this person saw something in this place or some witness told us go talk to this person because they know what happened over here. So there's a whole host of reasons why we would have gone to interview somebody that might have nothing to do with geolocation data. So I can't really speak to any specific person who Is the exclusion the lady's time is ex the gentlelady's time has expired. Um, Director, earlier you said, and I think I'm quoting accurately here, we pass information back and forth with social media companies. Um, can, can you explain that? Because, I mean, just read maybe out of context, I think people have concerns about that. Can you tell me what that means? I appreciate the question, and I, as I think back to my answer to that question, I, I was fearful that it might get misconstrued, so I appreciate you asking. Uh, what I was referring to um, is a couple different things. So one, in connection with uh, foreign misinformation, election influence stuff from, for example, the Russians, there have been instances where we will, based on intelligence we've received from overseas or other places, pass that to social media companies saying, hey, you know, we know this particular account is actually controlled by some Russian troll farm, for example, and then the social media companies then take action against that account, but they then do their own internal investigation, and that then sometimes leads them to other accounts. Are we talking about a foreigner or an American? Down. What's that? Are we talking about a person, if, and if we're talking about a person, is it a foreign person or an American? Well, the, you know, the, the classic example, the one that I just gave, is a, you know, a foreign source who is essentially posing as a, a U.S. Um, voice. Uh, and that's the essence of the Russian troll farm that, that's been gotten so much attention. So then in turn, the social media companies take action. They often will find other accounts linked to that account and take appropriate action. We've seen the same thing uh, it, to some extent with the Iranians uh, in connection with the last election. You may remember when Director Ratcliffe and I did a press right. conference. Right. There's a little bit of that going on there. So. That's kind of the essence of the back and forth of the social media companies that I was referring to. There are other situations, other situations, where sometimes social media companies see a threat to life, a violent threat of some sort uh, on their platforms that they will refer to us, which is the responsible thing to do. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to be clear. There are times at the direction of the government, social media companies take certain action. Not at the direction, no. You just said we, you give them information. You said we we're concerned about this, who we believe to be a foreign actor. I mean, it, it, let me step back a second. I think the broader concern is we just recently saw uh, communications that were largely redacted between uh, Dr. Fauci and the head, uh, the, the, the CEO or the, or the head of Facebook, most of it redacted. And we know what the result of all that was a year ago it was keeping information that they at the time deemed misinformation, but in fact wasn't. In fact, very credible information that they kept from the American people. And so that's my broader concern. It sounds to me like you're, this is something different potentially, but that's the concern we have, I think, as members of the Judiciary Committee, and frankly, I, I know American citizens have. So when you say passing information back and forth, working with these social media companies, we're in the context now of this communication, this email communication between Mr. Zuckerberg and, and Dr. Fauci that is largely redacted, but we know what, that they colluded to keep information from the American people. Yeah, we're, we're, I understand your concern. We're talking about two very different things. First off, social media companies aren't taking action under their terms of service at our direction. And some days I wish they might, but that ain't happening. I don't wish that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous kidding. about I'm, all of it. I'm being a little flippant, but... Uh, but no, we pass information, we're investigating, we ask them for information, and in the course of passing information to them, they then use that information and sometimes make decisions, again, 
They would tell you. If this information involves an American own. citizen, Gentleman's there would have to be a warrant expired. involved, right? Gentlemen's time has expired. You can answer this question. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you this repeat? If this information involves an American citizen, there would have to be some kind of warrant involved. The government's asking for information from a social media company. There would have to be some kind of warrant involved for you to get that information. Well, there's a variety of kinds of legal process, you know, uh, subpoenas, et cetera, where we pass information, where we're asking for information from them. They provide information in response to the legal process from us. A lot of the engagement that we're talking about is not that different from the engagement that we have with lots of other industries as well, you know, financial services, et cetera. Thank you. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C., there is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? 
They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanted to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.